verse 19. Go ahead. 18. 18. Oh, okay. But God led the people around by the way of the wilderness towards the Red Sea, and the people of Israel went up out of the land of Egypt equipped for battle. Okay. Now, you are going to see this footnote most, most certainly in the NIV, but maybe in other Bibles. Yam Suf. Do you see that? Yam Suf. Okay. I want you to know that the spelling is going to be the same. It's a different, um, I, I've told you Hebrew has little dots to tell you how to pronounce something. Red um, sea. Yeah, Red Sea, but Yam Suf means sea the Sea of Reeds. Sea of reeds. Suf, okay? Another word, Suf, means the end, okay? In other words, these same words uh, it, with different pronunciation, and I'm, I'm blowing this. I don't want you to hold the doctrine of what I'm telling you, but... They say that this was not the Red Sea. Most scholars will say it was not the Red Sea, that it was the uh, uh, Sea of Reeds. And so, do you see what I'm saying? Because the term Suf is used, Yam Suf, the Sea of Reeds, they can say that it wasn't the Red Sea that was very, very deep and all that. But, let's go somewhere real quickly and resolve this. Because people are always trying to diminish the Bible, right? They're always trying to. They're always trying to say, well, this isn't really that, and Suf can mean the Sea of Reeds, and this and that. Okay, I am going to go there, and I'll read it to you to save time, because we've got five more minutes before Mary has to go. But in Acts chapter 7, is it? I'm sure it is. Um, I hope it is, because if not, then I'm wasting your time. Um, uh, it may be in Peter, too. Um, oh, here it is. Acts 7.36, Stephen is speaking, and he says he brought them out after he had shown wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness 40 years. Well, guess what? In Greek, is in Hebrew. In Greek, Red Sea means what? No, it means Red Sea. You see what I'm saying? Let the New Testament interpret the Old Testament. If there's any doubt about the pronunciation, go to the New Testament and it will explain these. People will say, here's what I'm trying to say. In the Hebrew, well, they have that says Sea of Reeds. That's what I'm saying. And so people will say, whoops, I stepped on some, oh, I stepped on one of those beetles. Okay, this is Egypt. Okay, here's the Mount uh, Sinai. Whatever, I'm drawing this wrong, but anyway, here's the Sinai Peninsula, here's the land of Canaan up here, here's the Red Sea, okay, uh, or this is the Sinai, yes, yeah, Sinai Peninsula, and then over here are lots of little seas, right, little, little things, and they're, they've got reeds in them, reeds, right, and so I say, this is where they crossed, not the Red Sea, but they crossed this teeny little thing, and that word proves it, because Yom Suf, Suf can mean the Sea of Reeds, but Suf, the same word in Hebrew with different Dots or whatever, okay, means the end. Well, at the end of Israel is what? The Red Sea. I've been there. I've stood there. It's at the end of Israel. It's, uh, you got Timnah, and then you get down to Eilat. Eilat's the name of this town, beautiful town. And you stand right here, and there's Egypt, and you stand right there, and there's Jordan. You look right over there, and there's uh, Saudi Arabia. You're right there. You're at the end of the land. So the word suf means end, and it means reeds. Which do you choose? Well, if you're a liberal scholar that doesn't want to believe that God really opened up this giant body of water and let them through water deeper than their heads, then you're going to say, oh, it was the Sea of Reeds and it was only knee deep, right? Of course, the whole Egyptian army drowned in a knee deep sea. Stupid. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't diminish God's miracle. But you see what I'm saying is the NIV and lots of other people will say that this is Yom Suf and it's the Sea of Reeds. It's not the Red Sea. But the New Testament is written in Greek, not in Hebrew. And the New Testament says red, the color red. It doesn't say read. So that's the difference, is that liberal scholars love to find reasons to diminish God's word. And if they just, it's like saying, maybe you've heard this, maybe not. Here's another example, and we'll finish up with that today. Rahab, right? Rahab, the lady, when they were in uh, uh, Jericho, uh, they, they were going to destroy the city of Jericho. And the word that is describing her in Hebrew can mean innkeeper. I don't know if you've heard that, but that, that is in Hebrew apparently, and I don't know this for certain, but I've heard this from these scholars, that she wasn't really a harlot because the same word can be translated as an innkeeper. And of course, a, a lady back then that had an inn probably was a hooker. But it doesn't mean she was a hooker. It just simply means that innkeeper, okay? But guess what it says in the New Testament? Rahab the harlot. 
and the Greek is not Hebrew, and therefore let the New Testament interpret these things that are hard to... She was definitely a harlot. God used a prostitute for His purposes, and she is in the lineage of Christ. That's why a lot of people don't want to... That's why they don't want to do that. Let the New Testament explain the glory of what God does through sinful human people. Beings. Don't try to diminish it by saying, well, the, the Hebrew can actually mean, and I saw this like on the History Channel, this one female says, well, the Hebrew can actually mean an innkeeper, and so that's probably what was happening there. And I'm like, you don't, you, you, you're a doctor of theology, and you can't simply look at the New Testament and, and read what it says? Because Greek isn't Hebrew, lady. Anyway, but that's, that's what we go through. and I, that, You can see how passionate I get about that, because people are always trying to take this book, and they're trying to diminish it. Why? Make it sound nice. Yeah, they're trying to make it sound nicer because women are okay with God and the Old Testament makes them not okay with God. And it never does that. It exalts them. Read Proverbs 31 a couple times. It's the most wonderful passage in the world. I don't, I don't know anything in the Bible that lifts people up as much as Proverbs 31 does the man to his wife. I don't, you know, of course David says, what is man that you are mindful of him? He's making a general statement about human beings, even if he's just saying man. Women are just as splendidly built as men. So it's not like man is glorious and woman isn't. Uh, these things just make me so angry. I, I, you know, Jesus is so good to us and he has done great and mighty things for us. And he's given us a wonderful word. And we shouldn't worry about these things that people say. Don't ever worry about the things that people say. It'll explain itself. That's all there is to it. And I know it's a lot of studying, and we're only in Exodus after six months. But, <laughs> oh, anyway, okay. Somebody close us in prayer. Who, who wants to pray today?